The idea behind it is to revolutionize luggage and go more towards a push action as opposed to a pull. In other words, you'll be pushing all of your luggage from here on in with Jira, which is interesting. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our session. All right, so a lot of things are going on and what we're trying to do this time is connect the dots between several conversations. So we had a fantastic interview uh, with Iran from Green Inbox chatting all about the million dollar project and how to make it happen. And it's fascinating and very much, um, very much uh, challenging uh, chat because everyone wants to have a million dollar project not everyone knows how to get there, and we got some cool practical tips on how to do it. And luckily, uh, this time, we had a chance to speak with Neta Shalgi. He's the um, founder of Jiro, uh, who is now running a million dollar project, hopefully a million dollar project. I think they're up to about 750,000 now uh, on Kickstarter uh, for their new, uh, their new trolley called the Six. <laughs> To move forward in life, you have to let go of the past and never look back. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about um, the project. And um, this is a background. This is your second project. Is that right? No, that's actually my fourth project fourth and Hero's third one. So, yeah. Right, because uh, I think what we got to see and what the entire world got to see was this amazing first uh, project that you had uh, with something that no one had seen before, which is like this trolley with these big chunky wheels. Uh, and it kind of took the world by storm. That's the first time we got to, uh, to, to hear about it. Uh, and the second one is obviously making a lot of waves. Uh, tell us all about the journey and, and where you're at with it right now. Sure, thank you. So, um, I am. Israeli born and raised, uh, now living on, a, um, on Earth, on a cloud. Not really belong to anywhere anymore because of uh, the path. Um, so I started my way actually as industrial designer and um, got my first stage of um, entrepreneurial um, actions when I was uh, in my 20s. And... Um, I did, I had a, I owned a business uh, for industrial design in, in Israel and in Tel Aviv and did a lot of projects for external companies, um, small and big ones, uh, about, mostly about my field of interest, about technology, medical, uh, transportation, a lot of this, about, mostly about things around people, um, ergonomics, health, um, improving um, people's lives and stuff like that. And on the side, because of my um, personal passion and actually military service, I was an officer in the Air Force in a, in a role that I traveled a lot. And when I say a lot, it means a lot on a, on a daily basis abroad, um, uh, lugging stuff and equipment. And um, I personally broke every single piece of luggage that I ever owned. And so, so are my colleagues. And when I got stronger in my knowledge and my capabilities of design, I realized that actually there is potential that I can do it better. Um, I'm very into um, deep research, understanding the industry, uh, long-term trends, not just the uh, passion side of it and looking at the long-term trends from the beginning of the days of travels, basically of commercial travels when, you know, um, when people started to travel with, with um, um, steam engine based vehicles like ships, river ships, river crews, um, uh, trains, of course, and, and and um, as, as always, technology is uh, at the front. It changes everything. And when journey became a trip, um, when suddenly the port of landing was known and the time was known and the duration of the trip was known, because of that technology, everything changed. And from the days of uh, basically Louis Vuitton all the way to our days, uh, through days, the, the days, the early days of the uh, jet, um, engines, uh, 747s, the Concorde, all those, 
um, all those technologies shifted luggage into what it is today. But we discovered, I discovered along the, uh, along the lines an anomaly between what people actually need today in today's world of technology, uh, smartphones, connectivity, cloud, uh, working from re remotely to uh, what the other companies actually offer, uh, we discovered an anomaly that needs to be bridged. And this is the beginning of, this is the basis for the establishment of Jiro. Uh, the idea behind it is to revolutionize luggage and go more towards a push action as opposed to a pull. In other words, you'll be pushing all of your luggage from here on in with Jiro, which is interesting. The, the main point with the six is that we created a series of concepts and we are actually executing the first one now on Kickstarter on crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh, next 20 days um, is basically that we, after long research, we, um, and, and um, it also, it began from our big wheels and the, and the conversation with our existing customers and also our own experience with our own luggage with the Giro is that we discovered that because of the large wheels that we started all the story because of the large wheels center of gravity feels lighter runs over every terrain right. uh, people find themselves you know that the nature find a way how to behave with itself so people find themselves actually pushing their luggage and they can push the luggage unlike other luggage because it has the big wheels that just run over right um, curbs cobblestones whatever and ergonomically, that's the right thing to do. But um, uh, we had to, so we discovered that we're doing it ourselves and we started just to talk with our customers, interview them, and we discovered that they find themselves doing this for quite some time. And, and the entire push configuration was born. Um, and then we also know that 99% of the market using four wheels. So beside push and combining with four wheels, the six was born, that configuration. And the idea was to create, to move all the industry um, to the right um, uh, ergonomical solution. So Which is to push your luggage as opposed to pulling it. Yeah, pulling or rolling alongside you when you're going off any kind of smooth terrain like airport, terminal, uh, or, or train station, uh, you immediately going into lugging. Right. So, so this is a really big change. So you're it's you change. It's you so change this is the, like the, talking the, to people about basic. changing their, their basic behavior while traveling. So this is a totally, mm -hmm. totally the, the and then basically the six what we're calling um it's 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 a push luggage, but it's the end of luggage because luggage comes mm -hmm. from luggage and it's the right. end of luggage. Right. So this is a big change also terminology wise. It's it's a big change, but mm -hmm. what what we use in the marketing is basically that uh, over the research, we realized that every single thing in our lives moves from lugging into pushing. So starting with, um, you know, with children's strollers that forever been put in front of us and for a very good reason. I mean, ergonomically, um, the counterbalance of the pusher's body weight is, is applied on the object is a Newton's first law, right? You also want to see your kid in front of you. <laughs> like this yeah, and then stuff. safety, security, control, everything that you need about, you know, your right. cargo is exactly what you need when you're traveling. Hmm. The second thing is, you know, um, golf carts, uh, mail, um, you, you know, uh, mailman um, uh, carts. Everything right. is to push instead of luggage. I mean, and but luggage is just remain the same. Hmm. So that was a really change. I mean, just to see that all the industry Hmm. move into push and only luggage remained behind super cool. super cool so let's start with point one which is very self-evident with netta i mean a lot of these things come from a very clear passion for the project so i'm not saying that you have to be passionate about uh, your product in order to do uh, a million dollar kickstarter uh, project but i think he kind of do, like um, at, at least in his case. So he's obviously very, very passionate uh, about uh, Jiro, his company, and specifically about the six uh, for various reasons. Um, and he talks in 
depth about um, his experience as a designer and how everything comes into play uh, with both this project and with the product. So a good example of this is um, one thing that struck me is that they make everything uh, bespoke, like every part of the, of the Giro is made bespoke. In other words, nothing is like off the shelf. So that's really fascinating. Uh, and that's hopefully we can have a clip in like a few seconds about uh, attention to detail, production, and everything being done bespoke. So cue that. So um, the idea was to accommodate modern lifestyle for people who have to travel in order to uh, pursue their profession. It means that people um, in a lot of a lot of countries, mostly um, the United States, the Chinese market, Australia, uh, UK, people. I mean, Europe in general, but people have to travel, uh, have to leave their homes in order to meet their um, their subject of, of profession, and um, and they have to do it very often, short trips, um, all that. And suddenly the means of transportation allows that. So what kind of suitcase, what kind of bag or travel system, travel gear, they need to have with us in order to accommodate that. And then you have all the regulation that kicks off. You have um, airlines restrictions, you have weight restrictions, you have different weathers, you have different habits. You have a lot of changes in fashion of travels, you know, new fabrics, lycra, uh, wrinkle-free, all those. So all those factors are constantly changing and actually shaping the form of the means of uh, mobility that we're taking with us. So we are trying very hard uh, not just to do what the factories can do, which is buying the same type of wheels, the same type of handles, put everything together, and there you go, luggage, and then the companies are basically marketing those um, those boxes in a different way and different price points, but it's more of the same. We're trying to do through very heavy R&D and research, back, back and research, to really understand as I said, the long-term trends, what people really need, um, heavy on the ergonomics and the emotional part of travels. And then we come up with what we really need and then we kind of develop the industry to what the right solution should be versus what the industry can offer. That's why the luggage look different and behave different and it also comes with a learning curve that we like to say. Um, because it's not obvious, it's not, um, sometimes it's not intuitive according to what people used to do. Uh, so that's the, that's the foundation of Jiro. So I think it's really, really important uh, that uh, the founder uh, and the people in the project are very much um, concerned uh, with uh, the passion that goes into the project. And that's very, very clear here. I think he has an international team from people all over the world, and this is their fourth project. So it's very much um, it's very much a work that has to do with people knowing exactly what is happening as far as production, exactly what is happening as far as uh, media, exactly what is happening in every step along the way, and then feeling very very driven. So. This is obviously a very driven individual. Uh, we've actually, uh, it's important to note, I think we met uh, two or three weeks ago. Was it three weeks ago, Max? In, a, in, a, in one of their events, which was really, really good. Um, a very thought out, a very, um, very community focused. Which brings us to my next point. So if, again, the whole idea of tying uh, this session together with uh, the previous session on how to do a million dollar project, I think one of the most important points is taking Kickstarter offline. In other words, you should do all of your work for sure uh, through uh, the Kickstarter platform, but they did a really good job in creating community events uh, all over, uh, all over the US, and I think they did internationally as well. Uh, so uh, they hired a really good PR uh, company 
and a few other folks to be able to do community-centered events. And they went from place to place. They had a road show. So I think this point is really, really interesting. We realized that the personal meetings with reporters, bloggers, um, whoever is has some, an in, some interest in the right people, because a lot of people would uh, not even cover Kickstarter campaigns anymore. I mean, because the, the, the field, the area is very crowded and uh, deliver. So it's the reporters, bloggers' reputation about what they bring to their audience. Mm-hmm mutual responsibility from their side and from our side. That's actually really interesting because we're, we're definitely seeing that all across the board. There's a, a lot of fatigue when it comes to crowdfunding, yeah. a lot of fund, uh, really from every, in every aspect, uh, be it fashion, yeah. tech, whatever, there's a whole lot of fatigue and I'm assuming that the platforms are trying to deal with each in their own way. Uh, uh, and doing a, doing a personal tour is huge. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, so, that's really great advice for a lot of other people as well. Yeah, so um, part of the budgeting was to use PR companies because we don't have personally all the connections that we need. So we use PR companies. Um, in our case, we use uh, Blunt. I mean, they are good partners in uh, Blunt 2.0 and they are, um, they are bringing what, they, what we need in our field, which is mostly about finance, crowdfunding, technology, um, cool. that field of expertise. What is and the name of the company again? It's Blonde. To Blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also, uh, so this is one side of the PR equation. The other side is fashion lifestyle. We use uh, um, uh, 929. It's an agency from New York. So Very cool. basically, we bundle both of them together. So we have a clear, because we're coming from design, technology, travel, hospitality, uh, crowdfunding, we had to make sure that whatever we can, we can, somebody who has an interest in our product or the project itself, we will be able to reach to. Cool. Uh, before we, we combine with two that together, they're bringing the whole expertise about it. So here is the point that uh, all of us as creators uh, get to, and then either either we get stumped with it, um, or it becomes um, or it becomes detrimental within the project uh, pricing. So always, uh, when you're doing pricing, then you need to be able to reach a point where you say to yourself, "Okay, this pricing is fair. Uh, it will work on Kickstarter, and it's also going to sustain the project." But there are a couple of points that if we go back to our conversation um, uh, with the Green Inbox folks, then one uh, point that kept coming to mind is the sweet spot. So Facebook vis-a-vis Kickstarter, in other, or in other words, Kickstarter vis-a-vis Facebook ads, uh, makes it really appealing uh, to have a product placed uh, at around $80. It used to be $60 around 2015, 2016. But today, uh, a really good sweet spot uh, for Facebook ads to make the ads work is around $80. Uh, And if you're able to sustain that over a month's time, then you have a successful project. Now, granted, if you have uh, your pricing around then, around there, around $80, uh, and the media isn't good, or the film, or many other aspects don't work, then that won't do anything. But there is a question of how you do this. So, with Netta, obviously this is a fairly, um, it's a fairly expensive item because it's a premium item. So, he was... um, the, the way that they did their launch is they gave people the obligatory early bird pricing. So I think they were at around 350 and we'll see that in just a minute. And, and it, that's an important point because I think that was around 35% off. And if you're able to do that, then that's fantastic. But one point to keep in mind, these are luxury items. So there is a risk. You're running a very high risk uh, of... Uh, giving your customers um, obviously what they want, but at a high price point, your, your big challenge is to make sure that your messaging is right on point to be able to get in. So there's really a meeting point between your messaging and your pricing. Um, so first of all, let's go take a look uh, at a session when, 
we're discussing with Netta about uh, messaging. So that's the more critical point. And we'll take a look at that and then we'll take that into pricing. So let's take a look at what he did as far as messaging. Because obviously for him, he's looking to do, he's looking to revolutionize luggage. So no small task. So let's check that out. So that's, that's the six. Okay. And um, it, when we're talking, it's a carry on uh, size bag. So it's a 22 by 14 by nine inches. So it'll and fit in all overhead compartment. Yeah, it will fit in the overhead compartment, mostly for uh, U.S. and uh, international carriers. Uh, some of them are 21 and a half. Uh, if it was a uh, soft side luggage, it would squeeze in. But since it's a hard side, it's yeah. exactly the dimensions. Mm. So, um, the, the idea was to turn into push. So instead of going on the white side, we put the handle on the narrow side, on both sides. And then, uh, basically, that's the concept. And now, mechanically, how uh, the challenge was how to knock down all the components to turn into push. So the most significant thing that you can see is the wheels and the handles. So we use the Jira wheel at the back. Mm -hmm. That still allows uh, all-terrain capabilities. And it allows, the, it's a fixed wheels that is mm -hmm. very, you can see that it doesn't take any of the internal space. I mean, right. by a bit but and then it also this is very low i mean that ground clearance is very low so it's it is very low yeah it increases the packing space hmm. because we took we took the bottom all the way down mm -hmm. and the problem was i mean not the problem but the challenge was to incorporate spinners and we started that wheel because all the spinners that we had we ever had broke so we didn't want to have like state of the art Jiro wheels, you know, or all the magic in the back, and to and have some like wonky little wheels up front, right? Yeah. So it, we took two years, and we developed our own spinners. I mean, full bearing spinners. You developed uh, your own spinners. Yeah, we developed everything from scratch after two years of research. That's just, insane. But we developed everything. We developed the right. those wheels. I mean, right. and after developing those wheels, the spinner was a breeze. Right. Okay. We Fair already enough. have. Fair enough. Well, we have a lot of engineering uh, capabilities. We have the supply chain. We have the um, the material science. We're we're really. I mean, I think between all all of us, I mean, the development team, mm -hmm. we have um, almost uh, forty years of experience of of luggage manuf development and uh, manufacturing, and also. Um, we, we are, I think we are part of the most knowledgeable teams in luggage development in the world today. Um, cool. we, we are going to a lot of different factories. We see everything. I mean, we see the trends in the industry and we just adopt and, and bring what we need, um, trying to play with industry, uh, capabilities and to move the industry. Right. So the idea is to be able to have, um, the, uh, nothing short of uh, of a revolution in um, in carry on luggage, and then afterwards in luggage, uh, in, in different kinds of luggage, not just carry on. So I mean, they have a big task on their hand, but at the same time, it justifies the price. So he took quite a bit of a risk uh, with a high price point, and many high price point items on Kickstarter tend to fail if the messaging doesn't match the pricing and in this point it really does so this for us for us who look at kickstarter kind of like from above i mean we're we're makers we we have a whole bunch of kickstarter projects behind us but at this point we're kind of like trying to figure it out macro uh he took a risk and it paid off which is kind of great to see so this is not um th this goes back to the the point about having passion so this is something that you can do if you're really passionate about it. If you're not all that passionate about your product, you won't be able to take the risk needed, kind of like uh, a la Elon Musk or something. You, you really have to be able to do that. And he did. And it seems to be paying off, which is great. That you have into this uh, ecosystem of, of travel that a lot of people have had into other spheres, uh, be it tech or, or clothing or whatever. But uh, trying to create a sea change within within travel luggage is really really interesting 
that I like to call myself a time traveler. If you go to my LinkedIn profile, it's, it says time traveler, which I don't travel, you know, I don't jump leap into the future or to the past, but actually we all, in a way, we're all time travelers because we travel through time. I mean, from childhood into adulthood into, you know, old age, hopefully, but it doesn't happen in a, in a second. It happens throughout our lifetime and a lot of changes occur through our, through this lifetime. So we are facing um, time changes, but not just in, uh, in, in, the, in the density that we imagine as time travel, but we all travel through time. So this is another thing that we are, I'm, I'm investigating and researching for, for a while. Which brings me to my last question, um, or maybe it's too early to ask, are you gonna have uh, uh, the fourth Kickstarter project? Like, are you already, you, you must be already on your next design. Uh, is your mind already thinking that far forward or are you now uh, fully on the six? Uh, and then innovation is, uh, is you know, in the background. Yeah, uh, we, are, we are way ahead of the six. Um, of course, the, we like to say that the product development only starts when the first products hit the market. Like people start to use them and then you see all the problems immediately. It's yeah. very nice because the other part of, of crowdfunding is the first day, it's the second day people, you launch a product, people start to ask questions that we forgot to ask ourselves. So it's, you know, the crowd is asking and suddenly there are so many just That's statistical, cool. so many questions that some of them were not asked before. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. Um, yeah. Luckily, we are in, in that process. We, we were not like super surprised about the questions. There were one or two maybe that we, we actually didn't think about before, but any question is a good question. Right. Um, and uh, no, we are, we are uh, standing behind our word regarding the push configuration. Cool. And I, we would not uh, launch the six if we didn't have like the entire line uh, for people to stop to push their luggage. So uh, basically the innovation and everything, all the world that we are creating in Jiro is moving towards push. Um, so the six is the most, uh, is the um, queen mother because it's a carry on. Um, most of the people, you know, carry on is the first piece of luggage that you need to own. And then later on, according to your needs, you can create a collection of what you really need. But the carry on is the must have and then a backpack and then larger bag and, right. and et cetera, et cetera. So it's the beginning of a, rev of a push revolution, essentially, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, all our, all, all our uh, line is towards push, uh, dual wheels, uh, custom spinners, um, cool. packing space. I mean, really accommodates all the systems that we know, how, how those bags perform um, uh, individually, how they perform as a system. Uh, so we are, we are way ahead with the uh, development, and we are dosing it to the market. So just to tie together some of the threads that we put out there. So obviously you need to be passionate about what you do. So Neta is very much a nerd about, uh, about his gear, which is fantastic. So that enabled him to take a fairly high risk uh, with this project, uh, with a price point that's fairly high, even at the early bird, and still win. Uh, so that's a, I, I would say that that's a prerequisite for a million dollar project. You need to be able to take the risk. You need to be able to set your budget aside to be able to do it. And then you need to execute. So he used offline techniques and then online techniques. And it's very much paying off. Much of the firepower that he used was in his past projects, which were phenomenally successful. So uh, that's where we're at with this. Um, I think it's a really interesting test case. Uh, and also a really great product that has a real solid vision. So if, um, I, I don't think you need to have a vision as a prerequisite for a million dollar project, but boy does it help. Uh, so his vision, if to put it in one word, is to revolutionize luggage and uh, turn it into a push technology as opposed to a pull one. Uh, it's a great call to action uh, and I think it works really, really well. So join us for our next session. Uh, we're going to be having more and more of these, more interviews, uh, more discussions on live projects, projects that worked, projects that did not, and why. And this is also a good opportunity 
to um, send the ball over to you guys. It'll be great to hear from you, uh, see what you think of some of these episodes. And if you have a project that you think is suitable uh, for us to chat about, we'll be more than happy to hear uh, whether it's live or something that uh, that's in the past that you're interested in discussing, or even better, something that you have in the works. In any case, we'd love to hear from you guys. All right, that's it from us. Take care. <laughs>